Welcome back everyone, it's Hector from Millennial Finance bringing you the best financial content on the internet. In today's video, we will be going over Bill Ackman disturbing stock market analysis. We will be going over what Ackman believes is the trigger for the mother of all crashes. Let's begin. It's March 18, 2020. Billionaire hedge fund manager Bill Ackman calls into CNBC in a complete panic. The president be asking the American people to do. He's not saying, you know, He's not saying to storm the beaches at Normandy, right? He's saying, go home. This infamous hell is coming interview shocked the world. It was apparent that Ackman was distraught and stressed, crying over the simple fact that the country was falling apart right in front of our very eyes. But as time went on, facts emerged that made us rethink Ackman's motives. It turns out that the reason he was on the verge of tears was not because of how much money was being lost, but in fact how much money he made during this time, something we can all relate to. We all feel bad at times for making so much money. Right, right. To be more specific, Ackman made $2.7 billion off a $27 million investment. He managed to 10x his money something that the Wall Street Bets community could only dream of. After learning about this very simple fact, many people started to question the integrity and motivation of Ackman. During his interview, he pushed a narrative that the stock market was going to crash while at the same time having put options on the side. People questioned Ackman on whether his interview was made to promote a panic sell which would help Ackman in the long run. One year later and Bill Ackman is in the news once again. Can you guess why? It's because of his prediction that the US economy is heading down the toilet again. If this prediction is right, it could spell the end of the US economy. Ackham has been tweeting about this for the past few days, saying that he gave a presentation to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York in order to share his views on inflation and Fed policy. To summarize the boring presentation Ackman gave to the Feds, he thinks that the Fed should taper immediately and begin raising rates as soon as possible. Now think about this for a second. Why would a hedge fund manager who owns mostly equities want the Fed to taper? On many occasions, tapering would be the right thing, but this would cause the stock market to nosedive down, killing millions of gains and probably having people on Wall Street bets on suicide watch. It's hard to imagine a hedge fund manager would do the right thing by ignoring his interest and pushing forth a policy that would ultimately result in heavy losses for him. We live in a world where this is in fact not a reality, as we all suspected Ackman. The one having meetings with the Fed is in fact short, claiming, and I'm quoting, we have put our money where our mouth is and hedging out exposure to an upward move and rates, as we believe that a rise in rates could negatively impact our long equity partners. In other words, I'm going to make a lot of money if the Fed tapers. This calls into question the integrity of the Federal Reserve as well. Why are they even taking a meeting with a hedge fund manager who has a vested interest in pushing a certain policy? An outrageous proposal that in my opinion is a massive conflict. Now to be fair and not everything about this proposal is bad, Agman has made his strategy clear for 2022. It's one that will make money either way the market goes. If you listen to his latest interview, his strategy is simple yet effective and it's one you can replicate for your own good. Oftentimes many ask, how do I protect myself against this threat of high inflation? The answer is crypto, nah. But here is a better answer. Take a listen if you value your money. The emphasis of our strategy is owning these, what I call super durable, undisruptible companies, right? People are going to be ordering pizza and having it delivered and they're gonna eat it. And if for $8, you can feed a family of four with a, with a pizza pie, that's a pretty good proposition. And you get it delivered in 28 minutes by a smiling person who comes in a box and keeps it warm. That's going to continue. You know, Hilton, um, you know, Hilton's stock was down the most, I think, of anything we owned when the pandemic was announced. We meaningfully increased our position in the company in the mid 50s. Stock today is 140. So when you own businesses that have very, very attractive economic characteristics and they're largely immune, not immune on a day to day basis, but they're protected from interest rates moving up or down or commodity prices moving up or down. I think that maybe the single most important characteristic today is going to be pricing power. You know, if the cost of your inputs go up, you better, better be able to raise price, not lose the customer. And that is true for every one of our companies. So there you have Ackman essentially saying that the correct way to navigate the markets in the future is to own companies that have pricing power, businesses that people will use no matter what. 
even with inflation booming. I agree with good old Bill. People will continue to order pizzas and Starbucks. Ask yourself the question, would you stop eating your chicken bowl eye if they raised the price 10%? Of course you would not. Sure, you may be upset for a week or two, but I truly believe most people would continue to buy. But this is not the full picture. There is something Bill will not say publicly. It's very likely that his preferred scenario is that the Fed raises rates quickly. This would crash the markets including the stocks he talked about. But it would also make them a ton of money on the various interest rate hedges he has as well. If this played out to his plan, he would then sell those hedges, taking the profits to buy up the beaten down stocks. Ultimately, we know that the Fed would push rates back to zero if a recession was threatened. And again, Bill, just as he did in the infamous 2020 short, would make money from the fall and the eventual rise. Don't forget that while he was shouting, hell is coming on CNBC, he was exiting his short position and buying up Hilton stock in the $50 range. Hilton is now 140 a share. This was a strategy we've seen before. This interview from March 18, 2020 showcases exactly this. He shouts over and over again that the Hilton Hilton stock is going to zero, but listen to what happens halfway through the interview. It's quite an amazing clip. These guys know exactly how to play the game with the media. A major shareholder of Hilton. Hilton is the canary in the coal mine. This is an incredibly well capitalized, amazing, dominant global company that actually doesn't own many hotels. It just collects royalties it's down from like 120 to 50. Okay, it's going to zero, okay, along with every other hotel company in the world, you know. Park hotels and resorts. This, you know, stocks down from 33 to four. This is a spinoff from Hilton. Why is it at f down from 33 to four? Because the, every hotel is going to be shut down in the country. Every one. Hang on, okay? just, hang on, just one second. Um, you say Hilton is going to zero. I mean, oh, no, again, I'm a, I'm a major shareholder. What I'm saying is, if we allow this to continue the way we allow it to continue, okay, every hotel company in the world, okay, is done, okay, because no business can survive a period of 18 months without revenue, the, okay? And that's, stick with me, and the, that's what happens, okay, when, if you operate the way we're operating now, okay? Now, let me give you, so that's a very, very bearish thought, okay? And I've been super bearish, uh, but I got bullish, okay? And the reason why I got bullish, and I've been aggressively buying stocks, including Hilton, today, okay? And I've been buying all the way down, uh, Hilton, Restaurant brands, Starbucks, you know, walk your way through our... And the only stocks I'm not buying are companies who are on the board and I'm restricted. So that should confirm your suspicions. The strategy is simple. Buy a short hedge, start a panic, sell the short hedge and buy up the beaten down stock profit on both ends. Is exactly why Ackman's from Pershing Square was able to post a 58% return in 2019 and a 71% return in 2020. I hope this video serves as proof that whatever you hear in the media from someone who manages other people's money is likely not their actual opinion, but rather an agenda-based push to serve their own interest. Raising rates may be the correct thing to do, but pushing the Federal Reserve to do it only after you have secured a short position seems a little outrageous. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe.